So I want to start by saying thank you to all of you and sort of acknowledging um, Margaret Mead, who always said, you know, never doubt that a small group of committed citizens will change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. And I truly um, am really honored to work with this core group here because you are changing the world. And not only changing the world through your efforts on a daily basis, but also through your work in empowering other sort of like concentric groups throughout the world through justice makers, through empowering the communities of conscience, through the Brazil campaign, but really realizing that there's so much that we can do not only by ourselves, but by looking at how we put together resources and how we strategically move this forward. And as you all know, because we've talked about this a million times, but the way IBJ really was founded was um, with my first coming into contact with this 12-year-old boy in prison in Cambodia. He had been tortured and denied access to counsel. And sort of like the really strange realization that there were hundreds of thousands of people exactly like him who the world was like, you know, we can help political prisoners, but we can't help him because he's not a political prisoner. And sort of ironically, that governments throughout the world were open to having us help them, but they were not on anyone's mission statement. So I sort of began with this hope, but really it was a complete, um, how do I say it, like a hypothesis that the rest of the world would agree with it. That governments would be open. You know, we didn't know. We thought, well, for sure, Cambodia, but where else would they be open? And really slowly but surely, um, countries throughout the world started saying, yes, you know, we're interested. We want to join in with you. And that's a lot of how uh, we started looking at being strategic about what we do, knowing that we had the mission, knowing that we had the belief, which is all important for what we do, but also sort of looking at it from a very strategic perspective. And I think in a lot of ways, we are sort of like the Dave and Goliath, right? Where David <coughs> is like, okay, yo, people are like, go home, do what you need to do, but you are a shepherd boy. You know, what can you do? Because everybody up to that point had tried to get rid of Goliath. And they couldn't, they're huge armies or everything, but they couldn't do it. And so they were like, go home, you're a shepherd boy. And I think sometimes people say that to us, like, go home, you're like, you know, you're not the UN, you're not whatever. But, but David was always like, you know, they were like, who are you? The question always was, who are you? And he always like, sort of stood confidently where he was. And he's like, I am David, the shepherd boy. <laughs> and I think we say the same thing. We're like, we are IBJ. And we are you know, ready to move this forward. Um, what's exciting to me is that we've been able to work together and motivate groups throughout the world to believe in the story with us. And you know, David had what he have. He had his five stones, right? Five stones, a little sling. But he was really strategic with them. And he thought, okay, I might only have five stones, but I can figure out exactly what to do with them. And I think at IBJ, part of our strategies are looking at, number one, our justice makers competition, right? Strategically, we will look at using small amounts of money throughout the world to spark this innovation. Number two, we're looking at the accreditation program that, in fact, um, maybe we can't train everybody in person but there's ways of doing it through e-learning, through computers, through the use of technology. Um, looking at sort of influencing the entire picture through like our index or pieces, like how do we motivate other people, like governments and everybody else, to use not just you know, the, the stick approach, but maybe the carrot approach, or maybe not just the carrot, but also the stick. Um, our in-country programs are also sort of our bread and butter for what we do every day on a daily basis to make it happen. And so right now, what we're realizing is that like we're right there, but we see ourselves sort of on the edge, right? Realizing too, sort of like with the tipping point, that it's not only <coughs> that we have these individual pieces in place, but everything influences everything because the world is interconnected. Meaning whatever is done somewhere, like in one country, like even Cambodia, somehow in Burundi they can feel it because they cross-connect, right? And as we get more and more people through every corner of the world <coughs> working on this, it builds itself as a world movement. And what's exciting for us is that we've begun to see, just through the years, like small groups getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's like IBJ is just growing. I mean, even our, we complain about our database, but the only reason we complain about it is because it's really getting bigger <laughs> and we don't know how to manage it and it's like it's all over the place. But we are finding that we have greater and greater support throughout the world, in every corner of the world. So as we move this forward, one of the ways that we're looking at this is in celebration of International Human Rights Day, because we believe that our work is so relevant. 
um, not just in terms of ending torture for a few people, for some political prisoners, for the privileged whatnot, but also for every single person, every man, every woman, every child in the world. We look at this in terms of celebration, in terms of the work that we do, in terms of the hope that this is really possible. And so with our Razoo campaign, um, we are just grateful that every single person who is connected to IBJ is standing up and being able to do whatever it is.